Hi Ken from Make Tech here. Welcome to episode 5 of the CNC build. In this one we're doing electrical. There's a few things to cover so I'll put timestamps in the description so people can find it more easily. We've got clear path servos, 40,000 RPM ATC spindle, a 3.7 kilowatt VFD and then I've got an Arduino temperature logger and a thermal image camera that I'm going to use to install the spindle and test that out and wear in the bearings. So let's go and have a look at that now. Okay, I haven't recorded a video for a while, so I thought I'd just do an update before I go any further. Yeah, we've got the electrical cabinet there. I'll go into more detail about that later. Two sort of bulkheads here um, to run, yeah, data or I.O. and uh, power. So we've got 75 volts for the servos and the spindle cable, so that's like 220 volt. Then we've got the coolant, send and return, and the air. And I've tried to keep the workshop fairly tidy, but I've got stuff everywhere at the moment because this is a pretty big project, so. As you can see, I've got this uh, fairly well finished off, so there's still a bit of cable there that I need to trim off, but I'll leave that till the end when it's all working and tested. I haven't really talked about this stuff yet. This is a reservoir it's a catch, oil catch can for like a race car um, and then I've just put these massive heat sinks on there. This uh, 3D print that I've done, that'll um, force air through that if it needs it. So uh, yeah, this little aquarium pump works once this is primed. I had trouble priming it, but now that it's primed, it's flowing nicely. Now yeah, this little rig that I've got up here is a uh, thermal image camera and then I've got a six channel temperature logger. I made this years ago for uh, testing some um, electronics that I was working on. And yes, yeah, so I pulled that out and hooked it up. Windows XP uh, laptop and an Arduino Nano and I've used the six analog inputs on the Arduino Nano to do uh, serial monitoring of the inputs. And um, if you can see that I've got it's set to Celsius times 10, so that's like 16.5 degrees, 18 degrees. So where I've, um, yeah, I've got the little labels in the text box down there. So we've got water in and out of the spindle and water in and out of the uh, reservoir and radiator. Now I'll just set up the thermal image camera and we'll do our first run with all this temperature monitoring and see how that goes. As you can see the spindle got quite hot, the VFD shut down due to the settings I had programmed into it and I sent the thermal image camera video to Jenkin, the manufacturer, and they got back to me promptly with some information and what I didn't realise at the time of doing that test is that there was actually quite a high current draw at 200 hertz at that low RPM. So trying again with the advice in mind from Jenkin and this time putting a clamp amp meter on the power supply to the VFD I was able to see the power being drawn by the spindle which was surprisingly high I thought it was surprisingly high uh, at the 200 Hertz range it was about it was over 11 amps with um, 220 volts <clears throat> so trying again yeah, we can uh, we can have another look at how that went now.
So there you can see once I increase the speed or the frequency to around 300 hertz, the speed went up and the power consumption went down and therefore the temperature didn't increase so much and I was able to wear in the bearings and it's, that was an interesting experiment actually so you can see if you run the spindle too slow it will overheat and this spindle ideally will run at or well, full speed will be 666 hertz for 40,000 rpm so I won't necessarily run it at that speed all the time that's quite fast but um, yeah I'll have to find a uh, a range where I can use the spindle so for example that might be from 333 to 666 and uh, yeah anything less than that will obviously uh, potentially overheat the spindle so um, I'll leave that there for the spindle part now we'll move on to the clear path servos I've just been programming the clear path servos with the high level feedback feature so I'm setting this up to be uh, with the revolutions in range position so I've set it up so that if it's 12 counts out which is 12 counts out of the 800 counts per revolution then it'll throw an error on that uh, output pin from the uh, clear path servo and so yeah I've tuned it um, so that I can still do some high speed rapids with high acceleration but I've had to compromise between having high speed acceleration as hard as it'll go, which is I can do uh, 6,000 RPM per second up to 4,000 RPM with these before it reaches torque saturation. And so obviously going any faster than that's just gonna be creating heat, so I'm not gonna go any faster than that. And um, yeah, so if I try and go that fast, then I'm at the, the, the clear path servos are gonna lose their um, their count position a little bit as they're accelerating and so yeah how much that's gonna go out by will be way more than when it's just cruising around cutting at slower speed obviously it's going to maintain its position really easily compared to when it's trying to go at uh, 6,000 rpm per second acceleration so point is um, I've found a compromise so that if this has some sort of crash or uh, it's just not coping for some reason say the, mo the spindle isn't turned on or it's just bogging down like normally you probably just end up breaking bits so that's basically what the point of that is for there's other things you can do you can have the variable outputs but um anyway i was i was just gonna do a quick intro for this uh this video i made where i've gone through it on the computer there because i haven't got any screen recording software on this computer um, but I've done a couple of screenshots and I've just had the GoPro running while I demonstrate a few things and um, anyway, I'll leave it for there, I'll play that video now and uh, you guys can check it out. I've just been going through the clear path config application, um, it's quite amazing really like you know when you buy a servo you're getting all of its features, you're getting all of this amazing software. Uh, functionality so what I was looking at is there's one output on the I was looking at the pinout on the clear path servos and there's one called HLFB that's high level feedback so that basically can be programmed to do various different things it can be analog or digital and even on the analog you can choose the frequency of the PWM so it can be lower I think 40 Hertz or 480 Hertz so that's cool but then um, what I'm looking at doing is using this in range position if I make it 12 for example I found 12 was like pretty reasonable I was hoping I could do it as one and then that would just work and then if it goes out by even one then I'll know and then I'll have like perfect you know uh, perfect tracking of what I'm trying to do from the computer but that's a bit unreasonable it wouldn't hold one and then when it gets up to about four it starts to be okay for most of the time and then if you do high acceleration rapids that's when you have issues so that's basically what I'm trying to find a happy medium between being perfect and still being able to do high speed acceleration or high, high acceleration and high speed on rapid moves because that's when it's uh, still triggering this error uh, triggering the in-range 
error, I guess you'd call it. So we'll just, yeah, I'll put it on, I'll put it, I'll leave it at 12 for now. I think I should be able to make that trigger. Now if I turn this on, okay, so we're in range. So that's the state of that HLFB, yeah, high level feedback. So that's saying we're okay. Now, if I push this axis, I might be able to get it to go out of range. So there's the counts down there, I'm changing that. If I make it go out by 12, it'll change this. I don't know if I can push it hard enough. There we go. Yeah, if I push, shunt it sort of thing. Yeah, so I have to push pretty hard to do that. See the speeds I've got set up here, so that's pretty fast. I'll just show you how that looks. And I can go to 6,000 on the acceleration. Obviously that's going to be a lot faster. And yeah, you can see we're hitting out of position by 12 counts. Yeah, I just have to find a compromise between not triggering the in-range position when I'm doing rapids and having fast rapids. So I found that was roughly 12 counts and uh, 4,000 RPM with 3,000 RPM per second. That seems pretty reasonable. I mean, 4,000 RPM is like really fast. I don't even know if that's actually uh, safe for the longevity of the ball screws. I should check that. It seems to be handling it absolutely fine. Alright, we'll leave it there for the clear path servos, but I'll just add that if you're interested in more information about their features, you can uh, head to the website, download the user manual and go through it. It's very comprehensive. Clear path servos have probably too many features really to cover in a short video that's going to be relatively entertaining. So yeah, I've, I've cut it short um, where I've used it there. And yeah, following up from last video, I just want to say thanks to everyone that subscribed and all the uh, messages and everything. I really appreciate the support. And so if you like this video, then please subscribe. Obviously, I've still got more to do on this build, and so I'll keep uh, covering that with more videos. And there's going to be other projects and other things that I've mentioned previously as well. So we've got a lot to cover still with various videos coming up soon. And yeah, so I look forward to uh, putting them out. And thanks for your support, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Ooh.